M0FXB, welcome to my channel. We're on the Retivis RT3S and it's running the OpenGD77 firmware. I thought I'd show you what some of the, the buttons do. And as you can hear, sounds excellent and, and works well. And right now we're in channel mode or memory mode and we're on talk group 91. So just showing you the buttons. The, let's start with the red button. If we push the red button now, that's VFO mode. If we push it again, that's memory mode. If we go back to VFO mode and then hold the button, it's very small, but up here it says FM. I'll do that again, hold it down. And it now says DMR. We're now on a DMR channel, but in VFO mode. Hold it again, FM. Another interesting thing is when you're in FM analog, if you hold down the hash button, you get a nice scope. And you can move the noise floor up and down as well. Just by pushing the down arrow or the up arrow when it's scoping. You can also change the band width that it's scanning just by pushing the function button here and then turning the middle channel change knob goes from I think 125 is it? or oh, it goes a bit lower so it's quite good all the way up to 1000 and then to come out just press that again when you're in VFO normal mode you want to say I mean analog mode the star button if you press it it toggles you between FM narrow and FM. If we change to DMR mode, we'll just go to hold it down again, the red button. DMR, and then we push the star. If you look here, it says time slot one. So it's going time slot one, time slot two. Go back to channel mode. Just push the F, we're now in hotspot mode. And then what we'll do, we'll push the hash once. And it says talk group entry, and we can now type in any talk group we like, so say 91 that we're already on. Push the green button, and then that's it. Now we can talk on that channel and we can stay on it as long as we like. If we push the hash again, or twice, then you get private call. So I could put in a DMR number of my friend, push the hash. So let's just say his number is two, three, four, five, six. Hash, I mean, sorry, green button. He's in and now we can talk, but it's a private call. Back to the hash button here. We go one, two, three. Then you can select a, tonka, uh, <laughs> a contact from, your, from the list that you've already got. And you scroll through those contacts, but with the up and down arrows. We've got a parrot there, so I'm not sure if we're connected, we'll give it a go. So we'll go, actually, push the hash again, turn the mic up. It might not work. Um, contact, talk room, protocol, and contact, T, G, 9, talk room, entry. protocol, and contact, Contact, then we'll go to parrot, we have to push parrot, and then we can go... M0 FXB test. M0 FXB test. Yeah, so that worked. And I'm using 9990 on PyStar, but if it's on OpenSpot, I use 9999. And we can we could select disconnect as well if we want. Just go Talk room entry. nice and loud. Protocol entry. Contact T G P A O P E. Let's disconnect there, so let's try that. Push the green key. We should disconnect. Not linked. And have you noticed there's a big white line here? It could be a black line if you invert the color, and it would that's basically a signal meter, and there's more functionality with that. So I'll say that we're calling this on the side here, we're calling Quite hard to zoom in. This button that was, I'll say, we're calling it the function button. I haven't seen a diagram of what, of what from 
uh, open GD yet of what the RT3 buttons are do obviously that's the PTT let's just try the the very top button here see what it does the one above the PTT which, just so you know when you put this into firmware mode you do hold down this PTT here the top button and then turn it on and you're in firmware mode and that the LED which is green and red flashes so let's just push the top function button so seems to be reading out what I'm doing when I push it and it also what's that it's telling me where this what the channels connected to so it's it's not showing me the channel memory details it's showing me the actual channel which is quite handy let's put it into FM analog so analog mode if I push that top button yeah, it tells you where you are and what you're connected to by the looks of it. PC, private call 4000. If we change to a different call and then push it. Yeah, it's basically telling you what you're doing. Another thing I've noticed, if you're in analog mode, so that says DMR, if we hold it, we're now in FM analog, you can see the signal meter there. And we now start to push the hash. It allows us to do DTMF. Hash. Hash. Let's delete with the red button. So let's go hash. And I would go star three four one five two two for my all star node. And you hit the green. Now you, you you hear that tone, but I've tested this. It does work with my all star node, although we just hear a continuous tone. So let's back out. You've got 250 milliwatts showing at the top here. So if you want to change the power, the quick way is to hold this button here and then just go up and down, look, with the arrows. It's going all the way up to five and down. It goes right down because this radio can be a, can be a hot spot. So you need to get the power level correct. I pretty think that's everything on the front panel that I can remember. GPS is turned on. If you get the GPS model, I, you may as well. And then you've got your main menu, which is that button. It does have satellite mode, but it needs to be configured correctly. I think that's your signal meter, RSSI. There you go. RFS firmware, firmware model. Open you do have to import, the, you know, it's talking to me. You, you import that. They call it voice prompts, but it is click click. And you also have to import a thing they call kept, which is to do with satellite information. If you're going to use the satellite side of it, which I will do one day. Empty list means no one's, as far as like after reading, it means no, there's no one in my vicinity, um, so there's no list to look at, but it, you get a list of the satellites that are near you. That's the battery. We'll look at options in a minute. Language, firmware, signal meter, channel details. So there's a shortcut to this. It's showing you all your channel details. Color code, everything, and some of these are changeable, some aren't. Back with that, back with the red button. Your contacts, we've seen all that before. Even you can, it looks like you can pre configure DTMF. Let's have a look. So I'll have to teach myself how to do that, although I just manual dial. That's the DMR contacts. I've just done a manual one, but you can have, you know, many, many contacts. Now, new contact, does it allow me to create? Yeah, look, it allows me to create a new contact as well in that menu. Zone, click zone. That's the zones I've got. I thought that was blue the other day when I saw it. See, it's blue. I wasn't sure if it was a reflection, but that is actually blue. So when we've got a good GPS lock, I've got a feeling we're going to get some nice colour lines here. So I'm going to go outside and test that. 
So this is the OpenGD77 firmware. Now the options one, you have your display options. And the, you've got brightness control here, which as far as I can see, you don't have on a normal RT73. This is the dual band model, by the way. There's your main brightness. Mode squelch. Mm, not sure why you got that in display. Oh, manual buttons. Yeah, I have to put it in different modes and see. Maybe it's about controlling. You know this the. Yeah, we definitely have to try that one out. I'll leave it in squelch for now. Brightness. You've got a minimum so it, how dark you ever want it to go. UTC time zone LEDs. Battery percentage. And that's in display options. Colour invert, we'll do that one. Just turn the top knob, middle knob. And then you get the black and white screen. It looks better in, in the you know than on camera. Okay. Radio options. Again, lots of settings there. User power. Different squelch, scan modes, filter. I mean, it's just definitely uh, very good to use, very a lot of fun to use. Quite straightforward to load once you're prepared. General op general options. GPS on, yeah, we've got that on at the moment. The battery life seems quite good, I think. Um, you know, getting four or five hours, no problem at all out of it. I'd say longer. Basically, you know, you get a day out of it, and then it needs charging. And the spare batteries are £20 on these, so it's not too bad. You just put the spare battery in the charger. I think it's actually quite cheap to buy both at the same time. You could have a spare charger. And with the radios, you can pick them up quite low price second hand, like £60 used, £60, £70 used. And so you, if you get a spare radio, and just get, keep the charger and the, the charging lead and the battery as a spare. The radio is a bonus. Anyway, lots of settings there. And then we took, we've got sound options. Timeout, beat volume, DMR beat, RX beat, talker alias, which I haven't used yet. It's not applicable. Maybe we're in analog mode, but it, I'm going to test that today, I think, and do some video on that. And as far as I can see, it does load up the whole CSV database. Somehow they've they've used they've better used the memory that is on this radio to do that. So I'm sure I've forgotten some things, but um, you know, it's MD380 UV model, dual band model. This is. I've got the obviously the RT3S model. These are quite budget, but this one works well. The problem I've got another MD380, and all everything works fine except for the the red button is very stiff. You have to push it quite hard, and you'll think, well, why change it from the original? Well, it just it's it's definitely a better radio to use with this firmware, 100%. Would I like to see a nice color screen? Yeah, yeah, I would. Um, because I like colour screens, but from a functionality point of view, from using it, manual dial, talk where I spoke to people, even the black and white screen, actually, because the, the case is black, I actually gr I've grown to quite like it. So, um, but if we could choose colours, choose the background, choose the colours, you know, may, um, I, I, I'm going to look in to see if we can, if there's a selection to on the display to change the size of the letters. It could do with being it's a bit bolder, I would say. Um, but that's it. Thanks for watching my channel and thanks very much to the Open Seven Open G D seventy seven team for, for doing this firmware and the updates and lots more updates to come. This is what they call apparently the alpha model, so it's not the finished model. Uh, but I'm enjoying it. Bye for now, seven three.